Hi, my name is Mayhem Star, and welcome to Perfect Love. For a while, you were obsessed with the idea of a specific love. Not the type that was advertised in romance books or romantic movies. Not the type that grows together, that supports each other, the type that others envy. You wanted the type that corrodes and suffocates. The type that held on to you, clinging, begging to be loved. Who could only think about you to only have you, whatever costs. You had dated countless people to find that love, all failures. Really? All of them? Oh, you are delusional. It was never enough, and it would never be enough. You discarded them all aside and decided, if no one could give you the love you craved, then you would create someone who could. A doll? Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, my name is... Eris? No, it's not. My name is... Mayhem. But the last thing I want you to do... Is... Name your doll Mayhem. And then you become... Attached to me. And that's just really weird. Mayhem. Is that so? Well then. Let's begin. You remember when you first met him. The person who you would create the perfect love from. College life was dull as normal, classes to study to group calls. While walking aimlessly, you heard the cries of a poor individual, a student in the corner mercilessly taunting and beating up a poor victim. Despite already graduating into college, it seems some students still kept their bullying habits from high school. Please, I completed the assignment like you said. Why are you? Come on, Milo, you know why it has to be like this. Who was the one who tried to out us to the profs? Professors. But what, not doing your homework? We're the only ones who even tolerate you, you know. We're your only friends. And friends, well, they don't just snitch on other friends. I, I swear I didn't, I, it wasn't. What a sad sight to see. You almost feel bad. Uh, yeah, sure. Almost. You walked up to them casually. Uh, am I looking at Milo? Yes, I am. I'm Mayhem and I'm looking at them from my perspective. Move, you're causing a disturbance. What are you? Turning to you, flinching visibly, shrinking away in fear. I, uh, I... Did you hear me? I, I didn't think. Leave. Wow, I'm so manly and awesome. You could almost hear him whimper as he ran away, his tail between his legs. Gracefully, you walked up to the victim, pulling him by the arm. What if we were actually a female? Thank you. He stumbles forward and leans on you before scrambling and adjusting himself. S Sorry, I didn't mean to. Those friends of yours are rather cruel, aren't they? He looks up at you for a bit, startled. <laughs> well, I can't blame them. I transferred only a bit ago, and I'm still not used to being in such a new area. Yeah, but you're not in high school anymore, you're in college. Transferring wouldn't matter, no one would notice. You would go in and out of classes of hundreds of people, no one would notice your face disappear, or reappear, or appear in the first place. So, come on. They took me in when I had nobody else. What, your group of bully friends? So whether I like them or not, it's better than being alone. Especially since my family is so far away. He looks up at you with resolve. I'll be your new family. But you were able to scare them away so easily. How did you... They know not to mess with me. You need to know how to speak their language, that's all. Speak their language? He hesitates, biting his nails a bit. Wh Why'd you save me? Um, you just did it because you felt sorry for me, right? I, I mean, I get it, it's just... We're in the same class, right? Y you just want me to do your homework, I understand. Who hands out homework? Anymore in college. It's... Oh, whatever, whatever. So I understand, I'll just... I did it because I was worried about you. I don't care about making you do my homework. W worried? About me? Of course, who wouldn't be worried about someone being bullied? Well, it seems at least I did. Milo seems silent at first, but eventually speaks up. This may be a bit presumptuous, but... Could, could you teach me how to stand up for yourself like you did? You look at him, her gaze not wavering. Milo Cha- Milo Change? Change is his last name? How do we know his last name? We've only just met this guy. Theoretically. 
Milo change. You transferred only last year, correct? I believe you're taking kinesiology, and you have pretty impressive grades. Yeah, <laughs> how'd you know that? Yeah, exactly. How did we know that? I keep an eye on things that have my interest. If I had known you were being bullied, I would have stepped in sooner. Milo turns a shade of pink after hearing that you had interest in him. It was hard not to keep an eye on him. He always glanced at you whenever you passed him by. We had some of the same classes after all. You could always feel him watching, even when you weren't looking at him. Lonely. Has a crush on you. Isolated from his family and others like him. Meek and obedient. Perfect. Oh. We are the weirdo. I thought Milo was the weirdo. You want me to teach you? Uh, if, if you could. Alright, I don't mind. On one condition. You reach your hand out expectedly. Take me. Huh? Oh, okay. I see. We're playing the character who doesn't want, like, a normal relationship. You have, like, some weird kink where it, where you want someone to be a subordinate to you, or a sub, and you want to play the dom. We want to play the dom, so to speak. He's so shocked that he nearly falls over. He can't help but smile. What? Date? But I... He laughs awkwardly. Oh, of course. You just want to mess around with me, right? <laughs> That's very funny. Since there's no way you would actually like me. Don't say stuff like that. It sounds like you're already rejecting me. Especially since you're quite the catch. We are very manipulative. Very, very scary. Very scary, I know. Ooh. I thought I knew someone like this. Thankfully, they weren't like this. IRL, that is IRL. Milo turns beat red, unable to speak for a second. But a, a date. But we just met, and I don't know if I'm ready for Milo, calm down, alright? You're gonna be my plaything. We're gonna have fun together. I'm gonna have fun. The only way to get to know someone more personally is if you date them. Think of it as... a test run. How can you know if you don't try, right? I guess that's true. But I think it's... I'd like to date someone I could spend my life with. It's kind of cheesy when I say it out loud. No, I fully understand. Oh, perfect. The perfect victim. I feel the same. I would only date someone I could depend on for all my life. So then, let's make it count, shall we? You hold out your hand again, and he tenderly holds it. You, you won't betray me, right? Um, it's just that people in the past would jokingly... Why would I do such a cruel thing, Milo? Can't you trust me, the one who saved you? Oh, ho, 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 ho. What's this? It's not savior complex, what is it? I don't exactly remember. But it's weird. His face looks up with a bit of surprise. S saved me. That's right. So then. From now on, I am your... Ooh, safe. Let's start with boyfriend from the very top. Please, treat me well. My boyfriend. He smiles nervously and taps his feet happily. I've never... I've never had someone like that. Um, so I'm assuming that the boyfriend-girlfriend lover... Allows you to gender yourself. So boyfriend making you male. Um, girlfriend making you female. Then, what's his name? Lover making you genderless. Yeah, whatever. So I'm not sure what to expect. Huh? What, what kind of thing should I do with my boyfriend? Um, hmm. How about we come up with a nickname for each other? A nickname? Oh, well... What do you think would be a good nickname? Hmm, let's see. P pet? Pet? Oh my god. Dog. Oh no, um... <laughs> Suboptimal. <laughs> let's just leave it as pet. I think it makes more sense that way. My... Pet. Pet? Um, that nickname is... Why? Do you not like it? I think it's rather cute. Or do you think I chose wrong? You can see him fidgeting with his fingers. No, no pet is fine. 
Despite any possible complaints, you could see that he enjoyed being gifted a nickname. Hmm. My pet. My pet. Haha. <laughs> I feel so special. My pet. It feels nice to be special, doesn't it? Well then, my pet. My classes are st- <laughs> God damn. Well then, my pet. My classes are starting soon. Oh. So soon? Um. I'll miss you. Clingy. Oh, so sorry, I didn't mean to. Can we press H? Yes, we can press H. Interesting. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. It's alright. I think it's very cute, my pet. Don't try to dance around me. I am your boyfriend, after all. I will accept all of you. So long as you do the same. Do you accept all that I am? Yeah. Yes, of, of course I do. Good. That makes me happy. You walk a few steps before stopping. Oh, before I do, shall we set a time for a date? A, a date? So soon? No need to fret, my pet. It's just a way for us to know each other better. And so I can teach you how to stand up for yourself. Meet me at the split path at 7pm, and we can go somewhere fun together. I have a couple good places. Okay, okay, uh, split path. Don't be late, Milo. That's right, Milo, if you're late... Oh. Oh, my... Oh. As you walked away, you could feel Milo's gaze pouring in on you, watching as you left him behind. The start of an obsession. Okay, hold on. We want this type of, like, uber-obsessed relationship? Is that what we want? As the main character. Jesus. At 7pm, you came to the split path and see Milo pacing about. Oh, okay. Be courteous, and on time. Compliment him, and don't forget to... Milo. Eep. Jumping, Milo fumbles the flowers that he brought with him. You brought flowers too. I feel bad. I should have brought something as well. <laughs> no need, I just thought, um... I wanted to get something as beautiful as my boyfriend. What a charmer. You almost feel bad for what you're going to do with him. Almost. Thank you for the flowers. I'll try to give you something later tonight in return. Although the flowers might not be suitable for what we'll be doing. Oh, really? I'm sorry, I... There's no need to blame yourself. I never told you what we were going to do after all. I'll keep them safe, in my bag, for now. Taking the flowers, you carefully place them in your bag. Um, where should we go then? Um, maybe... Maybe we should get to know each other. Like, uh, I actually really enjoy sewing. Maybe later. There's more important things to attend to. There's actually two places we can go, although drastically different. The first place is the battling... Ba oh, ba oh, Jesus. I thought it was a battling cage, where you like get in an octagon and start killing each other. The first place is the batting range. It might be nice to exercise a bit. Your perfect love needs to be strong. Not just in strength, but in rage. To watch him crush your enemies to gain your love. To watch him use force to get what he pleases. A devotion with violence is an important asset. I'm sure he has some rage after being bullied for so long. The second part is a party on the other end. It might be nice to socialize with others, to get them on our side. A perfect place to teach him how to manipulate others. A perfect love with the power to sway those around him. To do his bidding for him. A silver tongue and charismatic act. Sometimes the only way to fight fire is with fire itself. That's actually kinda true. Although I wouldn't use the word manipulate. I'd use the word socializing. Haha, <laughs> uh, they both sound so interesting. Although I think you would know better, you can decide. Whatever you say, my pet. And let's head to the... Let's save here. Oh, it's interesting, the sound changes. If I press batting cages, it'll have the hitting sound of a baseball against a bat. And parties, people talking. Let's go to the party. I think it's time for you to find some new friends. Parties are a fun way to get to know people. Oh, I, uh, I don't know about that. I've never been good at parties. It's a college rite of passage, and I'll be there with you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I hate parties. I hate raves, I hate clubs. Oh, no. Okay, I feel for Milo now. I really feel for him. Jesus. 
Oh, there's a story. I think I uploaded a video before. No, no, I took it down, I think. Just wasn't in line with my type of content back then. Um, but I had a video describing my first ever experience at a party. I, not party, but like at a, at a club rave. I hated it. I hated every moment of it. It was just so loud and obnoxious and the music sucked ass. And people are just everywhere, shoulder to shoulder. It's like, what the fuck is this? And there's like three stripper poles that people just hang off of. And I was like, why? Get off of it. And it's not for like talented dancers or nothing. It's for like just the random people in the crowd to just jump up and hang on. That thing is slimy. Tons of people have touched it. It's all oily and disgusting. Oh, fucking whatever. 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 Don't worry, you can trust me. We're dating for life, aren't we? Milo's face warms up. I can almost hear his heartbeat from here. For life? For life? Yeah, well, yeah, but saying it out loud is... You chuckle a bit. What a pure boy. Come on, my pet. Let's head to the venue. I promise it'll be worthwhile. We arrive in the venue. The lights flashing and the music blaring. Amongst the crowd you see a red-haired girl dancing. Huh, Holly is here, huh? You smile. This couldn't be more perfect. Milo seems to flinch at all the stimulation he faces suddenly. Shh, shh, it's okay, my pet. Let's head somewhere a bit more quiet. Taking his hand, you bring him to the back where the tables are. Here goes the first part of the process. Milo, could you do something for me? Oh, uh, what is it? If, if it's anything to do with bugs, I don't know if I can... Oh, it's nothing like that, my pet. Soon you will meet some friends of mine. Oh, that sounds nice. It sure will be. There will be a point in the conversation where I'll ask you to agree with me. You won't know what I'm talking about, but I'll need you to play along. Alright, my pet. Milo seems to hesitate a bit before nodding. Uh, okay, I'm sure whatever it is you're making me agree to is... Don't worry, it's... Let's say, a way for you to learn. You smile slightly to reassure him, but it seems to only worry him more. Actually, I wanted to give you something for our first date. You pulled out some clip of earrings for him. Oh, clip on. You pulled out some clip on earrings for him. I always wondered if I should wear some, because everyone and their mother seems to be wearing it. Oh, not to mention piercings on the nose. Every other person I come across these days has some sort of piercing around their nose. And what is up with that? You a cow? Anyway. Whoa, I've always wanted to try these. If you wear them now, we'll match. You point to the ones dangling on your ear. I'll put it on right away. He clips it on eagerly and smiles goodly. D does it look good? Everything... <laughs> Everything looks good on you, my pet. With that, you and Milo hurry to meet your friends. Holly? Question mark. You. You finally made it. I was wondering if you were going to bail on us. A girl with brown hair and what looked to be a grass skirt was waving to us frantically. Valley, what do you mean by bail on you? I would never do that. Sure, sure. Like you didn't do that last time. She huffed dramatically, before seeing Milo hiding behind you. Oh, is this your new boy toy? Cute. It's been a while. How long is this one gonna last? A month? Six? My name is Milo. It's it's nice to meet you. Valley, I'm sure you of all people know it's not good to talk about how long a partner is going to last. Besides, you cling onto his arm and you can feel Milo fidgeting and his body heating up again. Milo's going to be my future husband. Isn't that right, my pet? Yeah, yeah, that's right. My pet is... Yeah, yeah, that's right. My pet is my girlfriend. <laughs> well, what? Ah, he... Huh, he seems a little bit different from the ones you've dated. Don't you usually date more, uh, scary people? No offense. So maybe you're right. I hope that you two have a long happiness together. She puts up her cups to cheer to our new relationship. Oh, I forgot to introduce the rest of the gang, silly me. Oh, I changed the gender, by the way. I went from boy to girl, just to see if there was any difference. Turns out there isn't, it's just a change in... 
literally gender, as I said before. The short one is Desmond. He's got a nasty temper. And I'm going to ruin you if you call me short again, Valley. Like I said, nasty. Still, it looks like you actually chose a decent person to date this time. Um, uh, thank you. Let's try not to disappoint, alright? I'm not really fond of troublemakers. I'll take note. Finally, there's Seth. Seth, could you stop reading for a second? Do you have an interest in monsters of lore? The answer is still no, Seth. He grumbles, going back to his book. Um, I, I would be of interest. Really? Do you know about the monster of the forest? I heard they kill innocents and are trying to get out. Oh, that's... He hesitates, but ultimately grips onto your arm, strongly. He's not that interested, Seth. After all, the only thing Seth cares about is being killed by a monster that doesn't exist. Th they exist? How do you explain the idea that everyone that goes in never comes out? I don't know. Maybe they just fall in a pit or something, Seth. Maybe this is an analogy for Milo's current situation. We mayhem are the monster. And he has wandered into our forest, and he can't get out. He grimaces, clearly annoyed at your lack of faith. Well, it's nice meeting you, Seth. Likewise. The conversation starts weaving and interconnecting, bouncing from topic to topic. Insects are the grossest, aren't they? What do they need so many legs for? Uh, the, the way they move is so... Ugh. Milo shudders, imagining an insect crawling around. Speaking of insects, I think that she's here in the venue today. I saw her red hair the second I stepped in here. Valley grimaces when she mentions her, and the other two look away, not wanting to pry. Um, I feel like this is a bad question, but um... Ah, Holly. Well, well Valley and her used to date, but they haven't been on good terms. That's saying it lightly. She's the one who betrayed me, got me kicked out of my last university, and for what? Weren't you stealing daughter from the school? The point is, she screwed me over. Should have kept your mouth shut. Speaking of which... Um, well... Huh? Come on, tell me. Don't bail out on information. You smile, feeding on Valley's love of gossip. I think Milo saw her yesterday giving us you- Oh boy. I think Milo saw her yesterday giving a USB to someone. Based on his description, it sounds like it had a picture of a hula girl on it. What? She she took the USB that got me kicked out and still tried to sell it to someone? What? Luckily it seems the deal didn't go well and she still has it on her. Isn't that right, Milo? All eyes turn on him and you can feel his panic from here. May Mayhem, what are you? Remember what you told me, Milo. You are supposed to agree with me. That you saw a girl with red hair and a green skirt try to give that USB to someone. Remember what you promised. He hesitates, but he seems to remember what you told him earlier. Uh, Earth to Milo? Now that I think about it. I did see a red-haired girl try to give a USB to someone, but I, I didn't know it was yours, so I... It's okay, Milo. There's no way you would have known. But I did think you deserved to know the truth, Valley. I mean, Holly did such awful things to you, and now... Huh. What a hypocrite. I was angry too when I saw her downstairs. Looking at Valley, it was obvious she was beyond anger. She threw a chair aside and marched down the stairs. You motherfucker. Argument started immediately along with screaming and sounds of glass breaking. Both Desmond and Seth ran down to try to calm her down, and Milo tried to as well, but you stopped him. Huh? Milo, let's not deal with that mess right now, shall we? But, but what about... Don't worry, they can take care of it. As the fight below continued, you brought him to the hall to talk. That turned out well. 
It turned out even better than expected to be honest. It took a while to plant that USB but it's worth it to get Milo exactly where you wanted him. Uh, um, not to question you or anything but why, why did you make me lie about that? I mean if you didn't bring that up Valley wouldn't be fighting and isn't it wrong to spread rumors like that? Is it really rumors if it's the truth? Valley has been making excuses left and right to excuse Holly's behavior towards her. No matter how much she yammers about how much she hates her, she's always had a soft spot for her. Angry about kicking her out, but never confronting her about it. Tragic. If it weren't for this, she would have never been able to snap out of it. But doing it like this is... Sometimes to get people to understand, we have to use unorthodox methods. He turns quiet and doesn't know what to say. Towards people we like, towards people we hate. In the end, it doesn't really matter how we get there. It's the result that matters. He pat Milo's shoulder reassuringly. You did well, Milo. I'm proud of you. The best way to use information is for your own benefit, right? To yours and to those you care about. Or to destroy someone like that bully of yours. The only way to fight fire sometimes is with fire. I mean, he'll never stop coming after you, you know? It's not wrong to protect yourself in this manner. He deserves it, doesn't he? Milo stops for a second, contemplative, then looks up at you with resolve. Please teach me, my pet. Wait, my nickname is Pet. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> no. Oh no. Oh whatever. You smile. This is really turning out better than you planned. Not. For a while it was your favorite thing to do together. We hung out with different people, learning about them, watching how they interact with each other. Enough to build trust, enough to be less inside, and then destroy them under the guise of helping. We pinned people against each other and watched as they ruined themselves. We sowed conflict where there hadn't been any. You and Milo were always together, the two lovebirds that flew from wire to wire. Milo changed as well. He dressed more cleanly, talked more sweetly. He could always get in and out of conversation in a pinch. He was learning how to use information as a weapon. All was well for a while, at least until... Hmm. Desmond had brought Milo over to the side to talk to him. He felt tense, worried that Desmond might undo all the hard work he did, so he decided to look for them. Walking around the venue, you hear Desmond's voice in an empty hall. You're a good guy, Milo. I could tell from the first moment we talked, but lately it feels like mayhem has been leading you down the wrong path. It was just as you thought. Desmond was meddling in others' affairs again. Out of your friends, he had probably one of the stronger moral compasses. Always trying to do what's right. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? It was irritating. But jumping in now would be... You decide to continue listening. Well, why would you say such a thing about her? Without her, I would be. Listen, it's just that Mayhem is the type who is, who will get what she wants, no matter what. Whatever methods have to be used, whatever needs to be sacrificed, a person whose ends justifies the means. What would she want from me then? Desmond is silent, seeming to hesitate. I'm... I'm not sure. Although he sounds confident, you can feel his hesitation. Listen, I can't control what you do, but I think you should. Suddenly it's quiet. He must be whispering something to him. Mm -mm, this isn't supposed to happen. He walked towards them as if looking for Milo, interrupting them. And what are you two whispering about? Oh, um, mayhem. Um, how long have you been there? I was just trying to find Milo since you guys were talking for so long. Why? Were you saying something I wasn't supposed to hear? Desmond looks away awkwardly as if he'd been caught. I hope you didn't hear my stomach rumble. It's nothing, my pet. He just had some questions for one of our classes. I'm, uh, I'm gonna get going now. Before he can say anything, he scurries away like the rat that he is. You turn to Milo, who seems to gaze at you intently. What did he really say to you, Milo? You aren't trying to... His voice trails off before smiling a bit. And there's no way you are. 
You're perfect as is. You're not sure what to say, you feel like trying to pry will cause him to doubt you more. You can't have this one fail on you, not when you've put so much effort into shaping him. Before he can say anything, Milo pulls you by the hand back to the group. Before long, it seemed that Milo was avoiding you. Whenever you called out to him or saw him walking around campus, he would run away. He started to jump group to group to avoid you. Yet, surprisingly, it didn't seem that he had decided to end a relationship. Either way, whatever that rat said to him seemed to have worked. Are you two having a fight? Did something happen? Ahaha, <laughs> it's nothing. It's just a silly disagreement. How annoying. If that's going to be the case, why not use it to your advantage? Hmm? You were able to corner Desmond after class one day. <laughs> what do you want? I have extra credit work after the today. It's obvious you wanted to run, but you refused to let this mouse free. I just wanted to talk about Ia. And, well, she might be in big trouble this time. His face twitched in worry. He hesitates. Not sure if he wants to take the bait. <laughs> Fine, but make it quick. You ended up dragging him into an empty lecture hall. He seems extremely paranoid as he comes in. What's going on with my girlfriend? Let me guess. She ended up fist fighting the professor? Again? Was that something that happened often? Oh, whatever. Doesn't matter. Here, I wanted you to look at this. You show him something on your phone and his eyes go wide with fear. Oh no, we're blackmailing a dude. That anger. What do you want? Huh, we're finally getting somewhere. Let's clean this mess up that he started. Amongst the crowd of people, you see Milo in the center of it all. The gossipers, a perfect place to gain information. They laugh as he jokes around. Everyone's eyes are on him, just as you had taught him. So somehow I ended up putting the lyrics in the paper, and he gave me full marks. They all laugh before Desmond walks into the crowd with a grimace look on his face. Oh hey Desmond, what are you- His sentence is cut off when he sees who Desmond brought with him. S sorry Milo, he, he forced me to. The man that had been torturing him stands before him, his face smiling with sadistic glee. Ryan. Milo's charismatic facade drops. He's been turned back to the bully victim from before. Well, well. Look who it is. He walks closer to Milo as he shrugs away. My old friend. It's been a while. Ryan. What do you want? What do I want? I just want to hang out with an old friend is all. You know, after you abandoned us, I was really heartbroken, you know? I thought we bonded in our time together. But I understand, I mean, I'm surprised you're friends with so many people. Especially since you used to be quite the stalker in the day. Milo's face is pale, he panics, as the other members whisper among themselves. No, no, it, it wasn't. Milo the stalker. I heard you followed that person around for how many days? And you even took a pair of their gym clothes. What were you doing with them, you perv? Disgusting. They made me do it. They peer pressured me and... Seriously though, does Mayhem know about this? Did you tell her? Were you afraid she'd break up with you immediately? Can you imagine her face when they find out their lovely, cute Milo is just a filthy pervert? Milo's at a loss for what to say. He curls up into a ball. P please, just, just stop. No, don't act like that. I heard you were avoiding your girlfriend. There's no way she'd ever come to save. Come to save who now? All eyes turn to you as you walk in, unfazed by Ryan's words. Ryan looks at you, clearly unimpressed. Oh, look at that. Your pet has come to save you. Did you feel pity for this guy after we broke up? That's pathetic, even for you. What? What is this? What's the, what? What? But it's not like I expected anything from you in the first place. You've always been so whiny, clingy, disgusting. Oh, was that just me? Ryan stiffens at your words. From what I recall, you were the one who was begging on the floor. What's this back and forth all about? What? That's stupid, why would I? 
I would be careful about those next words you say, Ryan. It would be terrible if anyone knew about that. Ryan goes silent, you can feel his eyes darken from place to place. As for Milo, even if he did stalk some poor bastard in his past, what excuse do you have to talk down on him? As if you are so pure hearted. As if you're all so pure hearted and innocent. In fact, you turn to the rest of them. I know exactly the kind of skeletons you keep in your closet. The group looks around nervously, their faces pill. The group looks around nervously, their faces filled with paranoia. So then, let's keep this conversation between us, alright? You turn to Ryan as he's you turn to Ryan and as soon as you touch his shoulder, he flinches. Let's try not to stir up any more trouble, okay? His eyes dart around, but eventually Ryan walks away without a word. The group disperses, awkwardly trying to guard their own secrets, and you're left alone with Milo. Why? Why did you come to save me? Well, I couldn't let my boyfriend be trampled on now, could I? Even if he's been avoiding me for a while. He freezes at your words, but you pet his head and reassure him. God, and he wears his cross upside down, his earrings? Shouldn't do that. You know, I was really worried that I'd done something wrong. And I really missed you, the fact that my pet wouldn't even glance at me made my heart sink. Desmond told me to avoid you for a while. But I shouldn't have trusted him. I, I didn't know. Shh, it's okay my pet, I forgive you. People out there may always betray you, but I'll always come to save you. And you'll do the same, right? You're the only person I can trust. Y yeah, from now on I'll only trust you. You smile at his remark, because we're getting somewhere. We're back on track. Yep. Desmond was meeting up with you at the split paths. Look, I brought Ryan just as you told me to, so we're even now, right? You pull out your phone and delete the picture in front of him. There, all gone. Desmond looks relieved at the picture gone. Thank goodness. If Ia, Ia? I can't decide if it's Ia or... Ia, no, it's Ia. Thank goodness. If Ia found out... Aya? My bad. Ha, huh, he really is naive, as if he didn't have a bunch of backups. Luckily you made it just in time. You won't let Milo escape. You really are horrible, you know. Everyone's gonna find out about how horrible. Oh, are you sure about that? This secret was only the tip of the iceberg, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. Besides, I did you a favor. It's better not to make your girlfriend into your ex, right? I know the history you had in high school. Desmond seems to panic at the thought of it being exposed. I don't understand why you're doing all of this. Manipulating into depending on you to this degree. Why? Why would you do that? Everyone has a love they want, right? Some people are willing to settle with less, but... I'm not that kind of person. That's all there is to it. Let's not try to do that again, Desmond. Believe me. Don't save... My prey. I'll make your life a living nightmare if you pull something like that again. What do you look like? There we go. Before you can ask anything else, you walk away from him, satisfied. Our job well done. What has Milo gotten himself into? For a while, it seemed as if everything had died down. The drama that occurred that day circulated for a bit, but it was quickly shut down. After all, how could kind, charismatic Milo ever do such a thing? Similarly, Desmond disappeared for a bit. Perhaps he was afraid of what happened, perhaps he was afraid of you. Ryan had too, after his public scolding, hide away from the public eye. Ever since Milo would never hesitate to praise you, to defend you, because to him you are his everything. You had saved him once again. And today's went on as normal, schoolwork, fun activities, some dates, but at least one of the big projects for your class. It seems Ryan has appeared again, and he's my partner for the big project. Milo fiddles with his earring a bit. While outwardly he looks uninterested, you can tell he's thinking deeply about something. Well, it's too bad that we can't get any dirt on him, right? I'm sure I could find something that could destroy him for good. He smiles sideways, his eyes deep with vengeance. I mean, it seems you know what to say to make him stutter. Sure I do, but that won't stop him from coming after you for that long. And I'd like to have some surprises up my sleeve as well. That's a bit boring, my pet. 
I still can't believe that we're using the same nickname for each other and it just so happens to be pet both ways. I thought it was going to be pet for Milo and then something else for us. As much as I love to destroy him in that way my pet, I would like to actually pass this class and this project is a huge part of my grade. So let's hold off of it now, alright? I mean you could do the project yourself. Milo makes a slight test sound with his mouth. But that's no fun my pet, can't we just rattle him up just a little bit? If I can't get this project done well, then I won't be staying in this university anymore. Huh, <sighs> Ryan's such a buzzkill. I was really hoping to discard what's left of that ego of his. I know you'd like to see him crumble too. Of course, I would love nothing more than to watch him ride. However, we're supposed to be meeting up in Cafe 15 to talk about what we're going to do. And I'd like you to come with me, just in case. Well, who knows if he'll pull something. He grins a little too wide. A little too happy at the situation. We are destined to be together. Isn't that right, Mayhem? You don't have a choice but to love me. The response sends shivers down your spine. Is this another case of... Is it, is the, I still can't find the word. I mean, we played a game like this before. Um, Cold Front. Where another person that you're friends with or whatever adopts your personality. And it seems like Milo is learning to be like us. Manipulative and forceful. No, actually no, he's more forceful than we are. We are very manipulative. Milo is just extremely clingy. And close to violent almost. A violent kind of clingy. You've trained him a little too well. Yeah. As we walk in, we see Ryan sitting at one of the booths. His face twists with contempt to annoyance when he sees that Milo has entered with you. Strange, he's not in our group, is he? Milo and I are a package deal. Or are you jealous that you've suddenly become the third wheel? Ryan looks as if he's going to cause a scene but Milo leans back casually. He strokes her hair and looks at him tauntingly. What are you going to do to my lovely mayhem? Ryan grits his teeth and sits back. Whatever, let's just hurry up and get this project finished. In the next couple of hours, you and Ryan planned out your project. The two of you ordered some food and drinks, seemingly chatting nonchalantly about what to do. But underneath it all, it felt like you were pointing knives at each other's throats. Well, it's not like if it wasn't a world we weren't used to battling with words. Milo would scroll through his phone nonchalantly as we talked with each other. But it felt as if part of him was always watching. As if finding a perfect moment of weakness, scribbling down Ryan's ramblings, her spoon slipped and fell into the ground. I'll get it for you, my pet. He ducks under the table and searches for a bit before placing the pen on the table and lifting his head. Your spoon, my wonderful girlfriend. He looks at Ryan and smirks condescendingly. Ugh, this lovey dovey crap makes me want to barf. His hand taps on the table a bit before looking at his phone. His eyes dart around for a second before standing. Well, I got a jet. See you losers later. Grabbing his backpack, he leaves the two of us alone. Finally. He chugs down the glass of water after he leaves and slams it on the table. Somehow it tastes bitter, like your disgust for him. Or maybe he's drugged your drink. Or maybe as... No, who bent over to pick up the spoon? Milo? Didn't Milo drug our water? He didn't even pay his portion of the bill, that low life. I'm tracking him right now, he's not that far. In fact, we might get some money out of him with these pictures I found. In fact, we might get some more money out of him with these pictures I found. Fun, but let's save that for later. He might find out you've been tracking him, and he might turn off his location. Sighing, you fork over the money and you and Milo head back. Let's walk back to the dorms, I have to get some stuff before the next class. Milo smiles and holds your hand as you walk. But as you walk, something doesn't feel right. You start to falter, your legs feeling weak and... My pet? We got drugged. I was right. The water was drugged. Everything goes dark. You wake up, staring at the ceiling of your dorm, laying on the bed. Milo is stroking your hair gently as you sleep. My pet, you'll be okay, right? You look so peaceful sleeping, I wish I could look after you for an eternity. He touches hair and he looks at you, his eyes wide with shock. He hugs you suddenly, clinging onto you. You're okay. 
His arms tightened as if ever afraid to let you go. My pet, what happened? You passed out suddenly after we left the cafe. Oh, did I now? You recall Ryan tapping his fingers against the table. His eyes were darting at the glass. Oh, I see what happened. Oh, I thought Milo drugged this. Haha, <laughs> that snake really has it out for me, huh? Wow, how totally unexpected. I knew he was up to something. He grits his teeth and I can hear him grind against each other. Now now, my pet, you'll hurt yourself that way. He caresses your head and he leans into your hand. Haha, <laughs> cute. Gross. It seems that Ryan must have drugged me. Ah, oh, that must have been water. Dropping my spoon was the perfect opportunity for him to do so. How oddly clever of him. No. No, one person would have been watching, another person would have been under the table. There is no way someone missed Ryan putting crap in your cup. Unless it was sleight of hand where he had like the drug in his palm and maybe he waved his hand over the cup and then got it in there. I mean, come on. It should have been me. I should have been the one who was drugged. He clenches under the bid sheets and his grip causes him to shake. Disgusting. He really doesn't know how to leave it alone, huh? Well, he should be given a taste of his own medicine. You tap his forehead as you think. Huh. What would make Ryan suffer more? Hmm. Drugging him back would be ample payback. You do have access to the chemistry lab. Watching Ryan shudder as his body collapses on himself as you did would be entertaining. Or maybe he might have other secrets he's hiding. You might see it coming if we attempt to drug him back. Perhaps Milo's past of stalking might be a benefit to us after all. Choices. Choices. Milo looks at you eagerly as you make your decision. The best way to get payback is to save. It's been a long time since we've been given an option. It's a relatively long game, lots and lots of reading. Drug him back. Wouldn't it be fun to give him a taste of his own medicine? I'm drugging him. That does sound fun. Think of all the applications I could use it for. Playing with your strength is always a good thing, my pet. Wouldn't it be fun to learn about such things on our little study date? Oh, are you asking me out so soon? He teases you, but you can see that he's giddy about the idea. Well then, shall we have fun on our date? Let's get going then. Despite your wobbly legs, you felt exhilarated at the thought of Ryan's face with fear. You walk out of the dorm room and Milo follows suit. You walk with Milo to a seemingly quiet part of the campus. Unlocking an abandoned lab, Milo trails in behind you. Okay, these labs in universities for the most part are relatively secure. I say relatively, I mean quite secure. Most of the time there are two doors. One that leads into the hallway to get to the labs, and the other door is to get into the lab. Now I think you need two separate keys to do this, to get from the outside into the hallway into the lab. The fact that they were able to get into a lab like this is very disturbing. And judging by the background, this isn't just any lab or a teaching lab. This is a research lab for people who aren't students essentially, it's for researchers and stuff, uh, postgrads. This does not look big enough to host a undergraduate class. And most undergraduate class labs are not only larger, but also emptier. Because they need to have empty tables to keep switching out whatever they're going to be teaching for that particular day. So somehow, these two people, Mayhem and Milo, have broken into a relatively secure complex to get their hands on potentially deadly chemicals and this is hard to believe <laughs> I'm being an asshole I'm sorry since when did you have access to this lab since a very kind professor saw my interest and decided to give me access yeah no 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 ah oh, so you took it off someone then haha <laughs> I can't pull the wool over your eyes then huh okay we stole we still okay fine. I disappointed in me, Milo. He takes your hand and kisses up your arm. How can I ever be disappointed in you, my pet? You're the one who saved me from Ryan. So now I'll be the one who'll save you. No matter what. 
Waltzing into the lab, the beakers and other glass tubes stood watching us. Well then, let's get started. You think back about... You think back of what it felt like when you were drugged. Dizziness, a bit of drowsiness. The way he did it so fast and the fact that you couldn't see it in the water. Ah, it looks like that bastard learned from before and actually made the proper dosage of GHB. He's done this before. Ah, you're right. You weren't here last year. There were a couple of deaths due to overdosing on drugs. A lot of students were thrown into jail, but... What uni is this? There were rumors that Ryan was the one behind it all. You can still recall Ryan's face when he got accused. It wasn't the face of someone that was innocent. Milo laughed sharply, interrupting your train of thought. Then he's really getting what he deserves then. Huh. I can't wait. Hmm. Don't be so hasty. I wouldn't want you to get hurt, my pet. You hand him over some safety goggles and he puts them on. Do I look good? Very. He giggles, happy with the compliment. Now then, shall we start? GHB is probably the most common one. You have the ingredients already. Luckily, you had experience with it before when you knew what to do. With the materials here, it seemed like it would be rather easy to make. Ah, huh, I've always wanted to make chloroform as well. Though it might not be that good in this situation. I suppose it would be different from the movies. You might as well suffocate them with how long that would take. Unfortunately, I still need him alive for the project. Maybe next time then. His voice sounded like he was joking, but his eyes told a different story. Maybe for fun, I'll show you how to make it in a bit. He pulled out the silicone packet you had taken from the seaweed you had eaten earlier. I'll have to check if it's enough, but ketamine is fun to make as well. And as for this, you pull out another packet from your pocket. Seems like it's pretty easy to get Roypanol. Roypanol. Never heard of this one. Benzodiazepines. Okay, yeah, I'm familiar with those. I'm reading the Wikipedia page. Ripenol lowers the side effects of anesthetic ketamine, resulting in less confusion in awakening state, less negative influence on the pulse rate, and fewer fluctuations in blood pressure. Pre-anesthetic agent. So this acts against ketamine. Hmm. Oh, assist with anesthesia. Okay, so it's like a part of a drug cocktail. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, it's... Hmm. Seems like it's pretty easy to get Roypanol if you pretend you need it for anxiety. You sure have this very, very interest. Oh, is there some hesitation I hear, my pet? <laughs> it was a joke. You know that I only have admiration for you. Just thinking of Ryan's face after he realized what he's done is so... He drools hungrily. Tantalizing. You stretch out, preparing to teach Milo the ropes. Shall we? For a couple days, you and Milo would sneak inside of the labs. You had to be careful to clean up afterwards, but considering how scheduled this lab was, no one ever came in. That's not how it works. Nah, -uh. Pretty sure that's not how it works. Lab techs are always close by. Milo, as usual, was a fast learner. He picked up everything naturally. At the same time, you and Ryan finished your project together. You had convinced Ryan to have a drink once both of you had finished. A perfect opportunity to test out your concoction. How surprising. I guess we're already done. He wants to celebrate early. How surprising. I guess since we're almost done, he wants to celebrate early. I'll be a bit more careful this time and... You hold out some white powder to show Milo. Get a bit of vengeance too then, hmm? Well, Milo, are you coming with? I'll need backup in case something goes wrong while we're talking. Actually, if you don't mind, may I do the honors? You tilt your head inquisitively. He wants to talk to Ryan? What a surprise. Are you sure, my pet? It would be terrible if a repeat of last time happened. I'd rather you not get hurt. I won't let him get the best of me this time. I promise you, my pet. You see his eyes filled with determination. He can't seem to say no to it. All right, Milo, as you wish. We arrived at the bar that Ryan had invited us. Hey, it's... His fake smile dropped as he saw that Milo had joined you. You too. You looked at him condescendingly. Sorry, did you not think I would bring him? I thought it'd be just us two, you know, because we actually worked on the project. Oh, well, sorry about that. He smiled in a fake manner and he glares at Milo. Milo doesn't even look at him as he scrolls through his phone. 
Ryan glares at him and turns to you. Ryan droops down closer to you and whispers, Mayhem, don't you think this is too much? I mean, all this, for him. I'm not sure I like what you're trying to say, Ryan. Ryan looks up suddenly to hear Milo laughing while looking on his phone. Never mind. When have you ever listened to me anyways? It'll end up badly, you know. Hmm, thanks for the warning. But I know what I'm doing. He turns to the bartender to call for drinks. Huh, how nostalgic. It seems like you still remember my favorite. Well, yeah, I'm not a monster. The barkeep taps our drinks onto the counter and we cheer to finishing our project. To us and another year of our professors torturing us. He puts the glass to his lips. But before Ryan could drink, Milo slung his arm around his shoulder. Huh? What are you doing? This. Oh, this. I just want to thank you so much for helping my girlfriend with this project. After all, it really saved your grade, and I can't thank you enough. Despite how friendly his words seemed, there was an aftertaste of malice. Though it seemed like Ryan didn't pick up on it. Oh, that? It was nothing. Though, that's not the reaction I was expecting. You planning something? Milo makes a quick expression of anger, before snapping back to his cheerful facade. What are you talking about? Do I look like the type to hold grudges? I mean, I can't be mad at a Galaxy Wars fan. What? You, you watch that too? Of course. What person wouldn't? In fact, there was a new preview earlier today. Really? Show me. Milo pulls up the review and lets Ryan watch on his phone and uses the other hand to slip something into his drink. He winks at you mischievously before stirring it slightly as the preview ends. Ugh, these previews are too short. Unfortunate, right? Guess we have to wait for the next one. Oh, but I shouldn't be interrupting your time together, so I'll just sit way over there. Watching. He smiles as he walks away, but it leaves shivers down Ryan's spine. He looks at the drink, and he hesitantly looks at you. What's the matter, Ryan? Let's drink to our success. Right. He looks at it again and closes his eyes and chugs it. He taps the glass on the table and walks off. He knows. Oh, where are you going, my friend? Ah, oh, yeah, I have class. Hmm, really? What was it that you used to say? That class is a waste of time. To say it nicely, that is. Why don't you just stay? His eyes flash a dangerous expression and Ryan looks towards you. Milo, let's let him go. Just seeing his ugly face is enough to make me puke. You cling onto Milo's arm and his face changes to an expression of adoration. Plus, if we leave now, then we can spend more time together, right? You trace your finger on his chest and as Milo's eyes are fixed in worship on you. Ryan slips out the back. Good luck, Ryan. Well, good luck, Ryan. No one's gonna save you if you collapse in the street. Ha ha ha. My pet. Why didn't you just say so? Huh? Where did that rat Ryan go? Still focusing on him instead of me. He looks back at you, gleeful. No. Of course not. You're my entire world. My everything. Then you shouldn't even so much as think about another person. Understand? Come now, Milo. Let me buy you a drink. You did such a good job. Dragging his attention away from Ryan, you meet Milo's gaze. You just wanted him to look at you. And only you. And so college life went on as normal. Whenever you saw Ryan, he would hurriedly walk towards the opposite direction. And Milo... He started to invite you out for drinks more often. He said that he wanted to get to know you more. But you knew that wasn't the truth. Every now and then you would see him putting something in your drink. Ho ho ho! He's turning against you. Your little pet is turning against his master. It was cute thinking that he could hide it from you. Really, it was. It made you proud that he had taken your lessons into heart. But now he's a threat. So you drink it. Ha! Huh? So you drank it never- <laughs> What? So you drank it nevertheless? The kind of glee he would whenever you did was entertaining and... He slowly felt weaker. Milo would feign ignorance asking if you were okay. You must be studying too much. Let me take care of you. And you'd be brought over to his dorm for him to nurse you. He likes that idea, doesn't he? 
Slowly, you sought to take care of other things, like your meals, your things. You weren't allowed to do certain things. Milo would simply get anything you wanted. Hand in knee. Anything you wanted or needed. Comforting, yet restricting. A cat playing with its prey. It is really fun being the mouse, isn't it? It was at least an entertaining game to you. At least it is to you, that's why you created this game. Perfect. Huh? We're self-destructive? Beyond belief? And manipulative? And we just want someone to destroy us? What? And so for a while, nothing else out of the blue went on. It was always just you and Milo. Milo's smooth charade never seemed to dim. He smothered you with love. Almost too much so, your body seemed to have regained its strength again. How annoying. It seems regardless of what you do, he would never push onward himself. Despite him simply blowing air about how much he wanted you, it just wasn't enough. Isn't it time to take action then? To finally make him what you wanted him to be. What? What more could you want him to be? He's pure evil. Just one final push. He was walking around campus waving to people as he passed by. He kept looking at you, smiling. Do you want to say something, my pet? Milo stopped for a second and cocked his head. How could I live without you, my pet? You've made me into something completely different. I'm so happy. Not only do people finally notice me, but they don't treat me like some gum that they found in their shoe. He hugs you, suddenly shaking. Oh, how could I ever part from you? If you were to ever leave... He looks at you again. I'll make sure I'm the only one you will ever see. There's no way we could part, right? He breathed out slowly as you heard his words. No, oh, poor simple Milo. His fate was sealed for good. Just one more push. I wish that were true, Milo. That we could be together until our graves. But let's be honest here, my pet. Do you really think that will happen? Do you really think I would never break up with you? Hmm. Milo. Wh why Why? I, I did everything right. I- I was- we were- I wanted to be together. M my pet, what did I do wrong? Did I make you angry? Or, or- or was I too clingy? Whatever it is, I'll fix it, I'll do anything. I'll change the way I look, the way I act. Did you prefer the pathetic me? I, I could go back to that. No, did I not take care of you enough? I, I get it, all the things I did. Haha, <laughs> I, I should have practiced more. I, I understand, how could such filth like me possibly compare to someone like you? Milo. <laughs> I can't, I can't go back to what it was. If, if you leave, they'll hurt me again. Living every day as if the next didn't matter, wondering why I even bothered to live. No, no, I can't. Please, please. Milo. Your own snap caused Milo to flinch. It was the first time you had ever raised your voice at him. I don't want to leave you. I want to be with you until death do us part. But time is not kind to us. We could drift apart or fight. No, no, we won't. Then what about those around us? Do you really think they won't try to tear us apart? You lean closer to him, next to his ear. My pet, it's the world around us that wants to take us apart. They're always planning, scheming, watching us fall apart. Don't you see? There's no way to escape it. You lean back, closing your eyes as if contemplating. Well, maybe there is a way. Milo's eyes light up and he leans closer to you. What? What is it? Whatever it takes. I refuse to let them take us. You cocked your head slightly. The final push. The only way for us to stay together forever is... Is to... Protect me. To get rid of them. The world is a cruel place, isn't it, my pet? All this rot that tries to tear us apart. Then there's only one thing for you to do. Destroy them all. And they're all gone. Then I will be yours. And just like that, Milo's eyes had changed. 
You weren't sure, but it felt like a haunting red. Ready to pick them off one by one. Milo, you understand what I mean, right? I'm sure if it ever comes to that, you'll know what to do. Oh, of course, my pet. It's so clear now. The only way to save you is to get rid of all those that oppose us. Huh. I wonder what would be easier. Drugging the cafeteria food or just the water supply. You can't help but smile happily at the results. My, this next part will be fun. It had taken you a while to track him down properly, but there he was in your line of sight. You walked up to him quietly. Ryan, he flinched at your voice and started to back away. What do you want from me? We're done, done, you hear me? I've already sent transfers to another college, so... Oh, Ryan, what are you so afraid of? That Milo might come after you? His face was full of nothing but rage towards you. You were the one who forced me to bully him, to do all those things. Oh, so the whole time you picked a weak person, a quote-unquote weak person, and molded him through events that we created, manifested, so to speak, just to make them yours. Crazy weird. Crazy weird. I like weird. Let's just go with that. I love it. What are you talking about, Ryan? I never said that. Or at least, you have no proof. Seriously, Mayhem, haven't you done enough already? All this training for Milo? Trying to get me to bully Milo so you could swoop in? Do you think you're some kind of savior or something? You taught him how to drug me, trying to befriend me so I wouldn't notice, I... Ah, I don't want to think about what happened the next day. Just, just leave me alone, I did everything that you asked, right? He smiled slightly and he snapped at you. All of this is your fault. Why those people died. Why I'm still in this situation. People die? What? I wish you could just die. Leave me alone. Please, don't make yourself into such a saint. Weren't you the one who wants to prank all those people, even though you knew it was dangerous? And who was the one who shifted the blame to others so you wouldn't be jailed? Don't you think it's the least you could do after you cheated on me? Huh? Oh, we go around fucking people up, essentially. <laughs> Maybe it started with Ryan when we decided to change our stance on things and just go full-blown weirdo mode, but honestly, all this is so all over the place. Come on, just admit it. You were the one who resigned yourself to this punishment. You were the one who resigned yourself to this punishment. You have no one to blame but yourself. You refused to break up with me. I didn't want to be with you anymore, I just... He's hyperventilating from the stress. It was a joy to watch him struggle. Why is this guy still associating with us? Just like when you were together with him, it was so entertaining watching him flounder about. Watching him cry, watching him beg. Forcing him to go through such lengths to get rid of you. When you got bored of him, you tricked him into cheating with someone. He was never your perfect love in the first place. Never would have been. The only hope for failures like that is to crush them to dust. Fine. You win. He snapped for a second, not believing what he heard. What? You're right, you did what I asked you. And I promised I would let you go. His eyes tell you he doesn't believe you. Heh, <laughs> he knows you far too well. Well, after this one thing. I knew there was a catch. He pulled out the USB and Ryan's eyes widened with fear. Is that? It is, the last piece of evidence that proves that you were the one who killed those people. It would be a shame if it went into the wrong hands. Ryan lunged at you desperately trying to grab the USB from your hands, but you dodged him. Ah, that's the spirit. Give it. Give it to me. Give it to me. And I will. Pry it from my hands. Fight me if you have to. Take it from me, and it's all yours. Without another word, Ryan tackled you to the ground. He tried to swipe at the USB over and over again. You struggled to move with his weight on you. He took the USB with ease. Ha. Ha ha. Fine. Finally. Before he could celebrate any longer though, Milo had grabbed his waist. With a cold smile, he asked a simple question. Finally what, Ryan? Ryan went pale, seeing Milo's smiling face loom over him. It, it's nothing, Milo. Nothing at all. He croaked out an unconvincing lie. Then if that's the case... Milo leaned in only inches away from Ryan's face. 
I would appreciate it if he never talked to my girlfriend again. Milo lets go of his waist and as he shakes, Ryan runs away without turning back. He turns to you next. My pet, what were you two talking about? He said it with a slight smile but there was a coldness to it. It seems he wanted to take me back, to use me as some sort of toy again. But no matter how much I said no, he refused to let go. Thank goodness you showed up. All lies of course, but Milo ate it up as if it was words of his god. He smiled, his eyes widened with an unsettling grin. Ah, ah, I see, I see. Then I'm glad I was able to save you then, my pet. Please don't worry. I'll make sure that something like this will never happen again. A quiet declaration with a red burning in his eyes. Ever since Ryan ran away, Milo seemed to have been engrossed with the new hobby. As much as he tried to find out about what he was doing, he seemed very secretive about it. Oh, are you trying to find out what your presence is going to be? It's a surprise for a reason. He would say in a sing-song manner, happy to see that you were so interested. He kept his gift under wraps, always checking his phone as if he were watching and waiting for something. Humming happily as he continued scrolling through his phone, he would always talk about how excited he was to gift it to you, how much you would love it, until finally he was finished. As a surprise, he blindfolded you and brought you somewhere secret. No, oh, I'm so excited. I hope you like all of my hard work. Unveiling your eyes to behold, you stood in awe of what you saw. For a second you thought there was a person sitting in a chair in front of you, but as you leaned in closer, you saw what it really was. A giant, jointed doll, an exact replica of Ryan, the skin, the eyes, the clothes, they all looked exactly like him. Milo, this is amazing. How did you manage to make him look so convincing? Because that's his skin, and he's killed Ryan. Oh, I just had some very good references, let's say. He smiled happily, proud at the praise you had given him. You inspected the doll closer. It was so lifelike. How did he... Ah, he realized immediately. The eyes were moving. The pupils dilating and expanding as if he were trying to communicate. The face seemed wet, as if it were crying. Milo leaned closer to you. Oh, I'm sorry though, my pet. I actually ended up selling this one to a collector. I hope you're not too mad. He looked back at him and gave him a smile. No, of course not, my pet. How could I be mad at you? Oh. Oh, no. As an apology, I'll make as many dolls as you like. Any friend... Foe, classmate, professor, I can make anyone into a doll for you. Anyone you want. Oh, how generous. You know, I was just thinking. I'd like a nice doll of Desmond. Don't you think it would be a nice gift for his girlfriend? I think she would be thrilled at that kind of surprise. If that's what you wish. Who am I to deny my pet? You stared into his eyes for the beautiful masterpiece you had made. A perfect doll maker, just for you. Any person could become your doll, to break or to destroy, to make them cry, of joy or fear. How delightful. Your hard work had spawned something so wonderful. Now you have your one and only perfect love. A doll's love end. That's fucked, to be perfectly honest. So we took a living person and made them into a doll, and they're still alive. Quite literally, I thought it was, oh, he killed them, took their skin, took their eyes, whatever, and then put them over a doll of the shape of a, uh, of a mannequin or something. And then it would look lifelike, but it would just be their organs and whatever else on a mannequin. But no, it turns out he's probably amputated, changed, probably kept the torso, but the rest of the body is all just doll, I guess. That's messed. Or what he could have done was he went to all the joints, cut them, and put um, uh, plastic, metal, wooden joints at all the joints, and that would effectively make them a doll as well. That's really messed up. Okay, so there are eight endings. We might get to all of them, but not in this one episode. My name's Mayhem Star, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.